Hey guys, I'm T and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we make trendy and fun crochet tutorials twice a week. And if you haven't already, smash that like button, drop a comment below, and subscribe to join in on the fun. Today we learn how to make a quintessential sweater. This one uses the mesh stitch, which is a first for us. It can be worn as a dress depending on how long you make it or how brave you're feeling, and it's fairly breathable so it's super comfy to wear. We have hundreds of modern crochet designs covering the aforementioned with even more coming so consider clicking the bell to subscribe and you'll never miss an upload. Also do me a huge favor and give this video a thumbs up if you like it or two thumbs down if you don't. Either way it's a great video show support so I can keep putting out free tutorials every Wednesday and Sunday. Now it's time to get on the show so without further ado. For this project any category 4 yarn will work but I used a total of 600 grams of yarn that's 1200 yards if you're stateside. As for tools, a 6mm hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. There is a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any $9.99 plus order. And enter this week's pattern giveaway by telling us what was your last food craving. For me, outside of everything, Oreos. Over the holidays we had an Oreo pie that I loved. Details for the giveaway down below. We're using 4 stitches for this project and they'll be as follows. Chain, slip stitch, single crochet, half double crochet, and double crochet. This tutorial is for size small, but we can adjust it for your size and we explain how to in the video, so let's get started. Getting the sweater started, we're first going to grab our category 4 yarn and make a slip knot. Next, we're going to grab our 6mm hook and start off by making an odd number chain that reaches from the top of the shoulder to the bottom of the sweater, keeping in mind that we will have a bottom band as well. So I want mine to be just about 27 inches or 69 centimeters because I want this a little bit longer. So I'm going to start by making a chain of 95. And now that we have our chain, we're all going to get started on our first row for our three row repeat, which is going to be one single crochet mesh row. So let's get that started. We're going to start by blocking off that last chain and do a chain one. Now that chain one doesn't count as a stitch, that's just our turning chain. And then into that chain that we blocked off or the second chain from our hook, we are going to insert with one single crochet. So we're going to bring our hook down into that chain, yarn over and pull through. Now that we have two loops in our hook, all we're going to do is yarn over and pull through both of those loops. And then from here, since this is a mesh row, we're going to chain one, skip that following chain, and then into the chain right after that, insert with a single crochet, forming a chain space, and that is our mesh detail. Let's do this again. We're going to chain one, skip the following stitch, single crochet into the next, and that's it. We're going to continue to chain one, skip a chain, and single crochet into that following stitch until we reach the end of the row. We've made our way all the way down and have reached the end of our row one. We should have ended on a single crochet into that last chain. And our second row in our three row repeat is going to be another mesh stitch row, so let's do this again. Getting started on this row, we're going to chain one and flip our work. And what we're going to do from here is into that first stitch from our previous row, insert with one single crochet, and then from there we're going to chain one, skip that following stitch, and then single crochet into the stitch right after which should be a single crochet from our previous row. So skip that chain space, and then into the top of this single crochet, we're going to do another single crochet forming a chain space which is going to be our mesh detail. Let's do this again. Chain one, skip the following stitch which should be a chain space, and then into the top of the next stitch which should be a single crochet. Insert into there with one single crochet. And that's it. It's basically just going to be a repeat of our previous row so let's just do this once more. Chain one, skip that following stitch, and then into the stitch right after that, which should be a single crochet stitch, insert with a single crochet, and continue to do this until we reach the end of the row. We are now at the end of our row two, 
and our row three for our three row repeat is going to be a single crochet. So to start off this row as well, we're gonna chain one, flip our work, and then put one single crochet into every stitch and chain space, making our way all the way down to the end of the row. So find that first stitch from our previous row, which is a single crochet stitch. Insert your hook into the top of that stitch with one single crochet. Now that following stitch that we should have should be a chain space. So just insert your hook into that entire gap with another single crochet. And let's do this again. Our next stitch should be a single crochet stitch. So into the top of that stitch, just one single crochet. And then into the next stitch, which should be a chain space. Insert your hook into the gap with one single crochet. And that's it. We're going to continue to do this until you reach the end of the row. All right, so we have just finished our row three and we should all have our three row repeat all finished up. So we have one mesh stitch, two mesh stitch rows, and then our third row is a single crochet row. And from here on out, it's just gonna be a repeat. And I'm just gonna get started on our row four with you guys. So our row four is gonna start with our mesh stitch row again. So to start off every mesh stitch row and single crochet row, just chain one, flip our work, and then into that first stitch from our previous row, insert with a single crochet, chain one, skip a stitch, and then single crochet into the next, forming a chain space, which is our detail for our mesh stitch. And continue to do this until we reach the end of the row. At the end of the row, chain one, continue with our second mesh stitch row. At the end of that row, chain one, and then do a single crochet row, and then repeat those three rows. We're gonna keep repeating those three rows with no increases and no decreases until we have the shoulder portion that we like. So placing the first row about two inches past the tip of our shoulder, working our way up until we reach the base of our neck. So go ahead and get that portion all finished up and I'll meet you guys back right after we do a single crochet row. All right, so I am back with my shoulder portion. I have a total of 24 rows and my width is just about seven inches or 18 centimeters. And now we're gonna get started on our neckline. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is insert our stitch marker into any stitch along the top, making sure that it is an even numbered stitch where we want our neckline to start. Now I've inserted my stitch marker into the sixth stitch from the top, and that's just about two inches or five centimeters. Now from here, since we all should have ended along the bottom, we're gonna start with our mesh stitch row since that is the next row that we have in our row sequence. So just chain one, flip our work, and then do our mesh stitches, making our way all the way up until we are one stitch right before our stitch marker. All right, so I'm back and I've just done my mesh stitch row, making my way all the way up until I am one stitch right before my stitch marker stitch. Now from here, we're gonna continue on with our row sequence. So the following row is going to be another mesh stitch row. And then the row after that will be another single crochet row with no increases and no decreases until we have a neckline that reaches across our chest over to the other side of the base of our neck. And we do wanna make sure that we're ending along our second mesh stitch row that ends along the top. Now a really quick tip that I have for you guys is every other second mesh stitch row is going to end along the top. So if you guys have the perfect width that you have that reaches across your chest, but it's along the bottom, either add three rows or subtract three rows just to make sure that we end along the top so that we can work into our shoulder seamlessly so that we don't have to do any cutting. So go ahead and get this chest portion all finished up and then I'll meet you guys back so we can get started on the other shoulder portion. I'm back with my neck portion and I now have a total of 47 rows and my width now is just about 11 inches or 28 centimeters. Now from here, since we all should have ended along the top right after our second mesh stitch row, all we're gonna do is make a chain for the same amount of stitches that we skipped along the side. So if you guys have my numbers, I skipped a total of six stitches over here. So right over here, I'm going to make a chain of six. And now that we have our chain, all we're gonna do from here is continue to do our row sequence with no increases and no decreases. So our last row should have been our second mesh stitch row, so our following row is going to be a single crochet row. So right after our chain, we're gonna block off that last chain, do a chain one, and then into that chain that we blocked off, or the second chain from our hook, insert with a single crochet, and then continue to put one single crochet into every chain and then into every stitch, making our way all the way down 
and then our following two rows are going to be two mesh stitch rows and then just keep repeating those three rows until we have the same amount of shoulder rows as this side right over here. And when we do, do a chain up a one and cut and then I will meet you guys back. All right, so I am back and I'm all finished up with my second shoulder portion. Now I have a total of 71 rows and my width is now 18 inches or 46 centimeters. And now that I have the same amount of rows as this shoulder portion over here, I did do a chain up a one and cut. And once we have this panel all finished up, we are going to make one more identical panel. And once we have the second one all finished up, I will meet you guys back so that we can seam the top of the shoulders together. So now that we have both of our panels all finished up, we're ready to seam the shoulders. So what we're going to do is make sure that they're placed on top of each other. And we're going to start by inserting our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. You're going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through. And once we have that, we are going to do a chain up of one to secure. And we're now going to do a single crochet seam. And all we're going to do is put one single crochet in through both the front and the back panel. Just one single crochet into every side row. Let's get this started. Start by finding our first side row right over here and insert your hook into that top loop. Find the next side row that we have into the back panel. Insert your hook into that top loop and then we're going to single crochet them together. Let's do that again. Into that next side row, we're going to find that top loop into the front panel. And then into the back panel, find that same side row, insert your hook into that top loop, and then single crochet those together. Now the first two rows that we should have had should have been two mesh stitch rows. Into the single crochet row, we're going to be putting one single crochet into there as well. So find that next side row, find that top loop and insert your hook into there, into the front panel. Find the next side row into the back panel, should be a single crochet row as well. Insert your hook into that top loop and then single crochet just like that. And we're just going to continue to do this until we don't have any more side rows left to work into and then do a chain up of one and cut and then repeat everything we just did here on the other side. All right, so now that both of our shoulders are all seamed up, the next thing we're going to do is seam the sides. So the first thing we're going to want to do is make sure that our work is whipped wrong side out, meaning the seam that we have the shoulder is still along the outside. And then we're going to be inserting our stitch marker into any stitch where we want our sleeve to start. Now I've inserted my stitch marker into the 24th stitch from the top and it's just about 6 inches or 15 centimeters. And now that we have our stitch marker into place, we can seam the sides. So let's all start by inserting our hook into the bottom corner stitch of the front and back panel. So getting started on our side seam, we are going to be inserting our yarn onto our hook. We're going to pull through and then do a chain up of one to secure. And now we're going to be single crocheting into both the front and the back panel at the same time. So let's all start by finding that first available stitch into the front panel and then find that next available stitch into the back panel and then single crochet them together. Let's do this again. Into that next available stitch into the front panel, insert your hook minus this gap and then into the next available stitch into the back panel, insert your hook into there minus this gap within the back panel and then single crochet. And that's it. Continue to do our seam, making our way all the way up until we reach our stitch marker. Do a chain up a one and cut, and then do the same thing that we just did here on the other side. All right, so now that everything is all seamed up, we can get started on our sleeve. So we're first gonna wanna make sure that our work is looped right side out, meaning all of the seams that we have are now along the inside. And then we're gonna be inserting our hook into the stitch that's nearest to our side seam. Right after that, we are going to be inserting our yarn onto our hook. We're going to pull through. And then from here, we're going to make an odd number chain the length that we want our sleeve to be. Now, I want my sleeve to be just about 15 inches or 38 centimeters. So I'm going to start by making a chain of 55. So now that we have our chain, we are now going to do our three row repeat, starting with our mesh stitch row. So start by blocking off that last chain. Do a chain one that counts as our turning chain, not as a stitch, and then into that chain that we blocked off or the second chain from our hook, insert with our first single crochet. 
So insert your hook with one single crochet. And then from here, we're going to chain one, skip that following stitch, and then into the stitch right after that, single crochet. So skip one, and then into that following stitch, single crochet, forming a chain space. From here, we're gonna continue to chain one, skip a stitch, and then single crochet into the following stitch until we reach the base. So now that we've made our way all the way down with our first mesh stitch row, we need to connect it into the base, and then we're gonna get started on our second row in our three-year repeat, which is going to be another mesh stitch row. So to connect it into the base, we're gonna start by inserting our hook into that next available stitch that we have with a slip stitch. So this is mine right here, this gap. I'm gonna insert my hook, yarn over, pull through everything. I'm gonna insert my yarn, yarn over, pull through everything. And now we have our first row nice and connected. Now getting started on our next row, we need to slip stitch up that next available stitch as well, just to work our way up to the next row. So this is my next stitch. I'm gonna insert my hook into that loop, yarn over, pull through everything. And once we have that slip stitch, we're gonna flip our work and then do our mesh stitch row, making our way all the way down again. So start by inserting your hook into that first available stitch, which should be a single crochet stitch from our previous row with one single crochet. Once we have our first single crochet, we are going to chain one, skip a stitch from our previous row, which should be our chain space, and then into that following stitch, which is a single crochet stitch from our previous row, single crochet into there. So the same exact mesh stitch that we did for the body. Now from here, continue to do our mesh stitch and I will meet you back at the end of this row. We have made our way all the way down to the end of our row two. Now we are gonna do the next row in our row sequence, which is a single crochet row. So just like how we did for the body, we're just gonna chain one, flip our work, and then put one single crochet into every stitch and chain space until we reach the base once more. So we've made our way all the way down with our row three or our single crochet row. We're just going to connect it into the base together once more and then right after that, it's gonna be a three row repeat making our way all the way around. So now that we don't have any more stitches left to work into, we're gonna to need to slip stitch it into the base. So start by finding that next available stitch that we have. Insert your hook into there with a slip stitch to close off this row three. And then from here, we do need to work our way up to the next row. So slip stitch up that next available stitch that we have into the base, flip our work, and then get started with our three row repeat, starting with our row one, so a mesh stitch row. So let's just get that started. Start by finding that last stitch from our previous row. Insert your hook into there with one single crochet. Chain one, skip a stitch, single crochet again. And we're just gonna keep repeating these three rows, making our way all the way around with no increases and no decreases until we don't have any more stitches left to work into into the armhole. And then I will meet you back so that we can seam our sleeve together. All right, so I've just made my way all the way around with my rows. I don't have any more stitches left to work into into the base and now we're going to seam our work. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that our work is flipped wrong side out so that all of our seams can be along the same side. And from here, what we're going to do is do a single crochet seam. So since we already know how to do that, I'm just gonna show you guys how to do the first view. So we're all gonna start by inserting our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. From there, we're gonna yarn over, pull through, do a chain up of one to secure, and now we're gonna do our single crochet seam. So start by finding that first stitch into the front panel, and then find the first stitch into the back panel, and then single crochet them together. That's it, let's do this just one more time. Start by finding that next stitch into the front panel, next stitch into the back panel, and then single crochet. So just the same seam that we did for the sides. We're gonna continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches left, do a chain up of one and cut, and then I will meet you back. All right, so now that our sleeve is all seamed up, we're ready to get started on our cuff. So the first thing we're gonna have to do is make sure that our work is flipped right side out now so that our seams are along the inside. Then we're gonna insert our hook, 
into any one of the side rows that we have along the bottom of our sleeve. We are going to start by inserting our yarn onto our hook, pull through, do a chain up of one to secure and all we're going to do from here is do a decrease of two single crochets into every side row. So let's get this started. My first side row that I have right here is a side mesh stitch row. If yours is a single crochet, that's completely fine. We're just going to find that top loop and insert our hook into there, yarn over, pull through, and this is my next side row, which is a single crochet row. Now, if yours is a mesh stitch row, that's completely fine as well. Just find that top loop, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, and when we have three loops on our hook, we're going to yarn over and pull through all three. Now that's how we do our decrease of two. Let's do this again. We're going to start by finding that next side row, which is this mesh stitch row for me. Insert your hook into that top loop, pull through, find your next side row, which is another mesh stitch row for me. Insert your hook into that top loop and then single crochet and then do a decrease. And that's it. We're going to continue to do this until we don't have any more side rows left to work into and then slip stitch into that chain space. Okay, so our single crochet row is all finished up and we have slip stitch into that chain space. The next we're going to do is make a chain the length that we want our cuff to be. Now I want my cuff to be just about three inches or eight centimeters. So I'm going to start by making a chain of 13. Now that we have our chain, we are going to block off that last chain and do a chain one. Into that chain that we blocked off or the second chain from our hook, we're going to insert with a slip stitch. So how that works is inserting your hook into that chain should have two loops on our hook. So just yarn over and pull through both of those loops. And a really quick tip that I have when we're doing our slip stitches is make sure that we're not accidentally tugging too tightly after we finish every stitch. Otherwise, the following row could be really tight to work into. So let's do this one more time. Into our following chain, insert your hook. Once we have those two loops on our hook, yarn over and pull through both loops. And continue to put one slip stitch into every chain. All right, now that we've put one slip stitch into every chain, we need to connect it into the base. So how that's going to work is we're going to find that next available stitch that we have into the base, which is this stitch right here for me. I'm going to insert my hook into there with a slip stitch to close off this row. And now that our row one is nice and attached, we do need to work our way up to the next row. So just into that next stitch into the base, slip stitch into there, flip our work, and now we're going to be doing back loop slip stitches. So let's get this started. Start by finding the last stitch from our previous row into that back loop or the loop that's furthest away from us insert your hook yarn over and pull through both loops on our hook still remembering not to tug too tightly let's do this again into that next stitches back loop insert your hook yarn over pull through everything and then into that next stitches back loop yarn over pull through and continue to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch And now that we've made our way all the way down with our back loop slip stitches to get started on a row three, since we're along the outside, all we're going to do is chain one and flip our work and then continue to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch again. And then I'll meet you back so we can connect it into the base. And now that we've put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, we need to connect it into the base. So start by finding that next available stitch. Insert your hook into there with a slip stitch to close off this row and then just to work our way up to the next row, slip stitch up that next stitch into the base, flip our work and then make our way down putting one back loop slip stitch into every stitch again. All we're going to do from here is keep repeating these two rows with no increases and no decreases until we don't have any more stitches left to work into into the base and then I'll meet you back so we can seam our cuff together. So we have made our way all the way around with our back loop slip stitch rows. We don't have any more stitches left to work into into the base. So now we're going to seam it together. And this is going to be an outside loop slip stitch seam. So we're first going to want to make sure that our work is still flipped right side out. You're going to be inserting our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. And then we're going to yarn over, pull through everything on our hook. And now we can get started on our seam. 
So start by finding that first available stitch into the front panel, and we're going to get started by inserting our hook into that front loop or the loop that's nearest to us. Next, we're going to insert our hook into that next available stitch into the back panel, making sure we're inserting into that back loop or the loop that's furthest away from us. Once we have those three loops, yarn over and pull through all three of those loops. Let's do that again. Into that next stitch into the front panel, insert your hook only in through that front loop, and then into the next stitch into the back panel, insert your hook only in through that back loop. Once we have those three loops, yarn over and pull through. And that's it. We're going to continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches left. And then when we don't, do a chain up of one and cut, and then repeat everything we just did here on the other side. So now that both of our sleeves are all finished up, we can get started on our bottom band. Now our bottom band is going to be done pretty much the same way that we did the cuff, so I'm just going to talk you guys through it as a really quick refresher. Make sure that our work is flipped right side out, then we're going to be inserting our hook into any one of the side rows that we have along the bottom. Insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, and then do a chain up of one to secure. And we're going to start by doing a decrease of two single crochets into every stitch into every side row, making our way all the way around. So start by finding your first available side row. This mesh stitch row is my first one. So I'm gonna insert my hook into there. Yarn over, pull through, and then I'm gonna insert my hook into that following side row, which mine is another mesh stitch row. I'm gonna insert my hook into there, yarn over, and pull through. And once we have those three loops on our hook, all we're going to do is yarn over, pull through all three. And we're going to continue to do our decrease, making our way all the way around, and then slip stitch into that chain space. So now that we've made our way all the way around with our single crochet row, the next thing we're going to do is make a chain the length that we want our bottom band to be. So I want mine to be just about the same length as my cuff, so I'm going to start by making another chain of 15, and just as a reminder, that's about 3 inches or 8 centimeters. Now that we have our chain, we're going to do a slip stitch row. So start by blocking off that last chain, do a chain one, and then into that chain that we blocked off, or the second chain from our hook, we're going to insert with a slip stitch, remembering not to tug too tightly after every stitch, and continue to put one slip stitch into every chain. Now that we've put one slip stitch into every chain, we're going to need to connect it into the base. So just as a reminder, we're going to be finding that next available stitch into the base and slip stitching it into there to close off this row. And then just to work our way up to the next row, slip stitch into that following stitch into the base, flip our work, and then make your way down, putting one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And that's it. At the end of this row, do a chain one, flip our work, and then continue to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, connecting it into the base the same way that we just did. And from here, we're just going to keep repeating those two rows with no increases and no decreases until we don't have any more stitches left to work into into the base. And then I'll meet you back so we can seam our bottom band together. So we have just made our way all the way around with our back loop slip stitch rows, and now we don't have any more stitches left to work into. So we're going to seam it. So let's all start by making sure that our work is flipped right side out. And this is going to be the same seam that we did for the cuff, so let's just do the first one together. So we're all going to start by finding that first available stitch into the front panel. Then we're going to insert our hook in through that front loop. And then find that next available stitch into the back panel. And then insert only in through that back loop. Once we have those three loops on our hook, just yarn over and pull through all three. And that's it. Continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into, and then do a chain up of one and cut. So now that our bottom band is all done, the next thing we're going to do is our collar. So the first thing we're going to have to do is just single crochet along our neckline. So start by making sure that our work is slipped right side out, and we're going to be inserting our hook into any one of the side rows that we have along our neckline, and then insert your yarn onto your hook. You're going to pull through chain one to secure and since we're working across our neckline first we're going to be putting one single crochet into every side row so we're going to find our first side row mine is this single crochet row 
If yours is a message row, that's completely fine. Just find that top loop and insert with just one single crochet and then move on to the next side row, which mine is now a mesh stitch row. So find that top loop and single crochet once. And just keep doing this, making our way all the way around. And a quick tip, when we reach the shoulder portion like this, we're just gonna be putting one single crochet into every stitch up and around. Well, we don't have any more stitches left to work into, slip stitch into that chain space and then I'll meet you back. So our single crochet row is all finished up. Our second row is going to be a row of just half double crochets, so let's get that started. After we've slip stitched into that chain space, we're going to start our row with a chain two. That chain two doesn't count as a stitch, we just want the height. And how we do a half double crochet is we're gonna start with a half double, is we're gonna start with a yarn over, and then we're gonna find that first stitch from our previous row, insert our hook, and pull through. Once we have those three loops on our hook, all we're gonna do is yarn over, and pull through all three of those loops. That is our first half double crochet. Let's do the next one. Start with the yarn over, into that following stitch, insert your hook, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three. And that's it. Continue to put one half double crochet into every stitch and I'll meet you back when we don't have any more stitches left. So I have made my way all the way around with my half double crochet row. And we do need to slip stitch it into that second chain to close it off. So all we're going to do is count up one, two chains from the two chains that we made when we started off this row. We're going to insert our hook into that second chain, yarn over, pull through everything with a slip stitch. And now that this row is closed off, the following row that we have is going to be our ribbing. So front and back post double crochets. And to get that started, we're going to do a chain two. We're all going to start by doing a yarn over and we're going to find the first half double crochet from our previous row, not our chain two. Once when we locate the first half double crochet, we're going to bring our hook down and then bring it in through that gap and then through the other side. So underneath the body of that half double crochet. And then from here, we're going to yarn over, pull through. Once we have three loops on our hook, we're going to yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Now that's a front post double crochet. Our following stitch is going to be a back post double crochet to get some ribbing. So how that's gonna work is we're gonna start with the yarn over again, and then we're gonna bring our hook underneath our work this time and through that gap. Now, over that next available half double crochet that we have, we're gonna bring our hook over and through the other side and then do our double crochet per usual. So just yarn over, pull through. We should have three loops on our hook, so yarn over pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Now this row is going to be a repeat of our front and back post double crochets, so let's do this again. Starting with the yarn over, we're gonna do our front post double crochet next. So find that next available half double crochet from our previous row, bring our hook down. Underneath the body of that half double crochet, we're gonna insert our hook. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, there's our front post double crochet. Now let's do our back. So start with the yarn over again. Bring our hook underneath our work this time. And then over the body of that next half double crochet. And then through the other side. From there, just yarn over, pull through, pull through two, pull through two, and that's it. From here on out, we're just going to continue to do our front and back post double crochets, making our way all the way around. And then slip stitch into that second chain that we made when we started off this row. All right, so we've just made our way all the way around with our front and back post double crochet row. And from here, we did close it off by slip stitching into that second chain. Now we're just gonna be doing one more row just to make our collar a little bit thicker. So how we're gonna do that is extend the ribbing. So just by doing our front post double crochet into the previous row's front post double crochet, and then doing a back post double crochet into the previous row's back post double crochet. So let's just do the first set. Right after we slip stitch into our chain, we're going to do another chain two for the height. We're gonna yarn over. And then underneath that first stitch, which should be a front post double crochet, we're gonna insert our hook, pull through, pull through two, pull through two. And then underneath that next stitch, which should be a back post double crochet, we're gonna yarn over, bring our hook underneath our work, and over that back post double crochet, and pull through. From here, we're gonna yarn over, pull through two, 
and pull through two. And that's it. We're just going to continue to do our front and back close double crochets, making our way all the way around. Slip stitch into that second chain that we made, and then do a chain up of one and cut. All right, so I'm back with my collar and I'm all done. The last thing we're gonna have to do is weave in all of our ends. And there you have it, guys. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Check us out on Instagram, Pinterest, or Twitter. Those links are down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'll catch y'all in the next one. Bye.